December 30th, 2013, and one of the earliest Instagram influencers and content creators is arrested when he lands at Schiphol International Airport in Amsterdam. He was known for his fashion and showing you how to stay in shape and get beautiful girls, kind of like Andrew Tate. If Andrew Tate was the infamous Sinaloa hitman Al Chino Antrax, I need you to like, share, and subscribe so you can keep following my Sicario series. Go ahead and do it. Do it now. Subscribe. There you go. Boom. Now, I've been to Schiphol Airport and it's the main artery into all of Europe. You can land there and get on a train right at the airport. It'll take you all the way to St. Petersburg, Russia and probably beyond. Uh, and Jose Rodrigo Gamboa, AKA El Chino Antrax, could have been going anywhere when he landed, but instead he ended up being taken to the only place he definitely didn't want to go, Los Estados Unidos, where he was under indictment for narco trafficking into San Diego. But let's go back, less than uh, 90 days, uh, to October 18th of 2013. <laughs> The man dressed as the homicidal clown was almost certainly working for none other than El Chino Antrax. The place was the high-end resort community of Los Cabos. You might have heard of it. American celebrities are often spotted there. The victim was celebrating his 64th birthday. He'd only been out of prison, both in Mexico and the U.S., for five years when this happened. Francisco Ariano Felix was his name, and Narco Traficante was his game. Senor Ariano was grabbed by the Mexican government back in 93 as part of the fallout when a Roman Catholic cardinal caught a few hot ones uh, at the Guadalajara airport up to the big Vatican in the sky, probably under Francisco's orders. Uh, this was during an attempt on El Chapo's life at the Guadalajara airport. Now, the Ariano Felix family, I think like seven brothers and one, maybe two sisters, were known as the Tijuana C.A.R. Tell. Remember that the increase in La Violencia south of the border was initially driven by El Chapo and his allies' goals of controlling La Plaza's of Tijuana and Juarez. Chino Antrax's hit on Francisco was likely to eliminate this washed up rival if he had any delusions of operating in Los Cabos, where Los Antrax, uh, a Sinaloa Sicario squad, but also traffickers in their own right, and people that extorted local businesses and controlled the micro dealing of El Dopa in the area. Uh, and they got rid of him if he had any illusions he was gonna have some action in Los Cabos. Now as an aside, with El Chino arrested uh, on December 30th of 2013, there was a woman named Claudio Ochoa Felix, you may have seen her pictures before, who supposedly took over the leadership of Los Antrax. And once again, if you're good, if you're my subscribers, and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel, and you'll get a story on El Claudio, who was known for her resemblance to another evil woman, Kim Kardashian. But, you know. So like I said, Al Chino was an early Instagram influencer and content creator. I wasn't really being sarcastic. Here's a great workout he posted, showing how you can maintain a tight bod for your Sicario work and for hanging with Paris Hilton, AKA the woman who got her siblings disinherited. But that's another story. Why do so many of these guys make their exploits so known, so in the face of the public and law enforcement on social media? Well, besides the fact that being an actual high-level gangster is often implies a great deal of narcissism, probably serves as a recruitment tool. Hey, look at us. We're living like this and we're not getting caught. Come join us. So, who were slash are Los Antrax and who was El Chino? Jose Rodrigo Arichaga Gamboa, AKA Chino Antrax, grew up in Cuyacan, capital of Sinaloa. Of course, we know who comes from there. His father was a small time political official 
and he wanted to be an Air Force pilot, but he had the skin condition psoriasis, so the Mexican military took a pass. So then he started going to college for architecture, which is one of those professions that sounds cool, but doesn't really have, has a limited job opportunities in the real world. And he got married and had a kid, and he dropped out of college to take advantage of a job opportunity his next door neighbors offered, none other than the family of El Mayo Zabata, one of El Chapo's equals in the Sinaloa Federation. So Chino Antrax definitely did not grow up poor, unlike El Chapo or El Mayo for that matter. He was uh, living at least next to one of the family homes of uh, El Mayo's family. Now, at first, according to his lawyers, when he pled guilty, El Chino was doing small errands for El Mayo's sons, who included Vicente, who famously testified against El Chapo and turned in $1.2 billion to the U.S. government in exchange for an 11-year prison term, which means he's out and about in the free world as we speak. But at some point before 09, El Chino Antrax became a member of a newly formed Sicario cell named after that deadly nerve agent, Anthrax. And the members all had tattoos and they also wore rings. And this group was initially tasked with the security for El Mayo's, El Mayo's family. But in Narcoland, the best defense is an aggressive offense. And thus, Los Antrax morphed into, for time, probably the most important and definitely the most infamous, famous of the Sicario crews, the paramilitaries under the Sinaloa umbrella of trained assassins of people capable of going off on their own and performing hits or raising up groups of local pistoleros to take over ranches and towns. In 2010, there was a huge gun battle between Los Antrax led pistoleros and uh, breakaway Zetas who were hired, backed, partnered with the Beltran Leva brothers who had been part of the Sinaloa Federation and then did their own thing. 30 people were murked at one time in this gun battle in Sonora, not far from the hotly contested Juarez border crossing. Now by 2011, Los Antrax must have been very active and very destructive and deemed a major source of power for the Sinaloans. Because on the 1st of November 2011, during an indoor football game in front of thousands of people in Culiacan, an armed commando group, other Sicarios, interrupted the game and uh, grabbed a guy named Francisco Ars Rubio, the leader at that time of Los Antrax, out of the uh, stands uh, and, and took him down, uh, I guess, to the field, made him and the soccer lay, players lie down on the ground. They grabbed one of the team's managers, uh, and knocked off the team's manager and Ars Rubio in a weekend. That leader of Los Antrax was uh, murked in front of the soccer fans. The state of Sinaloa saw 20 homicides as retaliation. So he was important and they hit back fast. In one incident, Los Antrax from a bridge in a small town in another incident at a volleyball game in Culiacan, uh, they the volleyball game, knocked off eight people, hurt a few others. Some other uh, people not longer alive were found, dumped on the ground throughout the state. And um, the people that knocked off that leader of Los Antrax were Los Mazateclos, AKA the guys from Mazatlan, which is another city in Sinaloa. And they got allied with the Beltran Levi's uh, when they broke away. So the Beltran Levi's were a big operation themselves. They broke away. They were paying the Zetas up in the north. And that's where Los Antrax bandled them. And they were paying these Mazatlans down in Sinaloa, sort of on the Pacific coast, a little bit south. So that's how effective and big Los Antrax were. They were fighting Zetas in the north and these other set of guys in the south and were able to handle a two-pronged war. Of course, they weren't the only Sicarios under the Sinaloa umbrella. Before Ars Rubio was knocked off, Los Antrax made some power moves like assassinating the two nephews of Amado and Vicente Carrillo Fuentes, the Lord of the Skies, you might have heard of them, who of course were a part of the Juarez power structure up in the north. So just to keep a clear picture for you, from 89 to 93, Sinaloa 
fought to take over Tijuana, and then in the early 2000s, it attempted to take over the Juarez Plaza and was mostly, though not totally successful, in Juarez, though they were in Tijuana, which resulted in the extended period of Juarez being the world's homicide capital. Now, at the beginning of this story, I told you that El Chino likely oversaw the clown hit on Francesco Ariano Felix, a Tijuana leftover, and I just mentioned that Ars Rubio led Los Antrax's hits on members of the Carrillo Fuentes clan, I mean, huge power players up in Juarez, and I mentioned that, you know, they fought the Zetas, the Beltran Levas. So Los Antrax was definitely involved all around the country in very important actions. So thus, El Chino Antrax is the leader of the group after Ars Rubio's untimely demise in front of thousands of soccer fans, definitely, uh, I mean, probably the most infamous and powerful Sicario in all of Narcoland and a trafficker in his own right as New Year's Eve 2013 approached and he was going to land in Amsterdam. Now the Sinaloa operation is actually referred to in Mexico usually as a federation, a group of independent mini mafias that work together and Los Antrax certainly held their own areas of power like Los Cabos and had their own trafficking lines which is what got El Chino indicted out of the San Diego Federal District. Now while El Chino would blur his face in his social media posts, international law enforcement was slowly tightening the noose around him and when he landed at Schiphol in Amsterdam, the feds were sure the man they arrested was Gamboa by the distinctive Antrax ring he wore on his finger, which was often spotted on his copious social media feed. Now, before his arrest, he'd been living undercover using the name of a deceased Mexican man, altering his features with plastic surgery and trying to remove his fingerprints, according to the U.S. prosecutors. Now, like I said, Shy Pole in Amsterdam is your ticket to damn near anywhere in all of Eurasia by plane, train, or automobile, so he almost got away. Now, the ring of people in the San Diego area tied to El Chino had 28 million in cash seized during the time they were investigated, so they were no small potatoes. And during the four more years, uh, El Chino sat in federal custody working out a plea deal, El Chapo was taken into custody. And the former Instagram influencer spent uh, the final 32 months before he took his plea in solitary confinement conditions that his lawyer said gave him auditory hallucinations, caused him to lose weight and stay awake much of the night. Sounds like the U.S. government was keeping him safe and under pressure, aka he was telling. And just five short months after his boss's partner and sometime rival for Sinaloan supremacy, Joaquin Shorty Guzman was sentenced to many, many life terms of no parole at the Florence ADX Supermax prison under the Rocky Mountains. El Chino Antrax, former leader of Sinaloa's most important paramilitary Sicario cell and a trafficker of enough significance in his own right that 28 million in cash was seized from his group in San Diego was given just seven years. Before being sentenced, uh, Mr. Arachiga Gamboa, AKA El Chino, Dressed in an orange jumpsuit of federal custody, expressed his remorse to the judge, quote, I'm truly ashamed. I promise you I will never again go the wrong way. I would like to be able to work honestly. Well, in early 2020, Alcino Antrax left U.S. federal prison and started parole in San Diego. On May 6th, his parole officer went to his house after he didn't show up for report day. But two weeks later, Mr. Gamboa, his sister, and her husband were found in a BMW down in Culiacan. His own wife had been kidnapped, orchard raid and red rum back in 2014, right after El Chino's incarceration. The fact that he returned to Sinaloa to Culiacan where all the power players were at, El Mayo's sons and El Chapo's sons and etc., must have meant he thought he was more than safe. But, she, but he snitched, you might say. Well, sometimes in a case as big as El Chapo's, or the target is a done deal anyways. You let other important people snitch since the boss is cooked anyways, and then they get back into the fold and get back to business. This has certainly happened before here in the U.S., definitely lots down in Mexico. But apparently, El Mayo didn't see it that way, or more likely, 
El Chapo's sons wanted him muerto, and they got to him before he got to safety with El Mayo. Or family members of the various victims of Los Antrax ambushed him. Or, knowing how things go with those people, I'd say the most likely scenario is that El Mayo's group told El Chino he'd be safe, and he went towards them, but they were actually serving him up to Los Chapitos, El Chapo's sons, or even his brother, who was quietly one of the big power players too. Anthrax, a deadly substance to all that come in contact with it. And for the members of Los Anthrax, even them themselves, and only a few may even still be alive, or possibly not even. And that's one more tale of a guy for a time who was the top Sicario Narcoland, El Prophet Los Drogas, Americano.